People are going to be watching the markets tomorrow as we see what's happened after this drone attack. Uh, drone strikes on the world's largest oil plant in Saudi Arabia yesterday. Houthi rebels claiming responsibility for that attack this morning. And the White House is not buying that. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says Iran is behind the attacks. He hasn't offered any proof of that just yet. Yesterday, Pompeo tweeted this. Tehran is behind nearly 100 attacks on Saudi Arabia while Rouhani and Zarif pretend to engage in diplomacy. Iran has now launched an unprecedented attack on the world's energy supply. There's no evidence the attacks came from Yemen. Now, exactly who is responsible, that's unclear. A U.S. source with knowledge of the incident tells CNN that there are signs the attacks came from inside Iraq. And the Wall Street Journal says officials are investigating if cruise missiles were fired from southern Iraq, not Yemen although no evidence to back either claim has emerged. Saudi Arabia is the world's largest oil exporter. This knocked out half of its oil capacity, which equates to 5% of the daily world supply. And that means we could see a spike in gas prices. Let's get back to the news of the day because there is a lot. First, this, the U.S. make U.S. is making a new military move to challenge Iran, sending more forces to the Middle East in response to potential threats against American troops in the region. The Trump administration announced yesterday that a U.S. aircraft carrier and a bomber task force are being sent to areas closer to Iran. Tonight, rare access to the two most visible military assets deployed to the Middle East last month. Their mission? To stop a possible attack by Iranian-backed forces. Four long-range B-52 bombers sent as a show of force. They arrived at Al-Udid Air Base in Qatar 51 hours after being ordered to deploy and were flying missions three days later. Also in the region, the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln. I am the reason you are here tonight. General Frank McKenzie, the head of U.S. Central Command, traveled to the region to address troops and see if the additional U.S. military power is deterring Iran. In addition to bringing this enormous aircraft carrier into the region, the U.S. is also flying F-A-18s every single day as part of the presence mission. The carrier is seen by potential opponents, mm -hmm. and they have to weigh the enormous capabilities that a resident aboard this platform. According to U.S. officials, the Iranians were close to launching attacks in early May, but the U.S. presence could have deterred them. Although Iranian threats on land remain high, Iran has pulled back some of its boats, bringing down some tensions at sea. I think we associate uh, that with the carrier coming in and some of the other things that we've done. Still, McKenzie would not rule out asking for more troops or equipment in the future. Well, the Iranians are continue to be at it. Their behavior hasn't changed. Lucas Tomlinson, live in Washington with the very latest on this. Hi, Lucas. Hey, Eric. Iran's stockpile material needed to make a nuclear bomb is increasing. That's according to a spokesman for Iran's nuclear agency, who warns Europe needs to act quickly to save the landmark nuclear agreement, which President Trump abandoned last year. As we move forward, the situation will get more difficult. The European side must realize that there is not much time left. If they want to take any action, they must carry it out as soon as possible.